Okay, I wasn't going to share a story about my dad, but since Matt brought him up, I'll share a funny little anecdote. Kelly just mentioned clearing cafeteria tables. I do that sometimes, and I learned that from my dad. So one time, he's out in the cafeteria, clearing tables, talking to all the customers as he does so. He's wearing his name tag, with a big smile on his face as always, and he goes and puts the tray where he's supposed to do it, and then walks away. And a lady was so impressed with this that she actually came to the office afterwards. And she said, I want to talk to the manager. I think it is so awesome that you employ these senior citizens and give them something to do. <laughs> and it was a little awkward for the manager. And they said, well, uh, actually, that's the owner of the place. So it's something that we are really, really passionate about, getting to know your customers, getting out on the floor, putting ourselves in the customer's shoes, and getting to know them and really experiencing what they experience when they're at our resort. I'm really passionate about growth. It's something that I think about all the time. Growing up in the ski industry, conversations around the dinner table were always centered around how do we get more people to ski? How do we share our love of the mountains with people? Are people having a good time when they come to our resort? What can we do to make them have a better time? These days, conversations around growth center a lot about big data and analytics. And that's important. But we're losing something in the process. We are losing that personal connection with our visitors. And it's something that we really need to get back to. We need to get out and experience what they experience. We need to get to know them beyond what's contained in their CRM profile. We need to get to know what motivates them, what their fears are, what they like, what they don't like, if they had any frustrations or annoyances the last time they were here at your resort and the cause of these frustrations and annoyances. And we need to know what they liked. We can get so many insights from talking to people. And I don't just mean talking at them with our sales or marketing hat on or our resort ambassador hat on. I mean really getting to know them, talking with them, getting to know why they spent their disposable income with you and not with your competitor, or not on another leisure activity altogether. These insights are so very important, and they help us to offer better experiences to our guests and grow the sport. In the ski industry, we have a conversion rate that hovers around 20%, which means that only about one in five people that ski for the first time will actually become skiers. When you couple this with the fact that the statistics show that it costs at least five times more, sometimes many more than that, at least five times more to acquire a new customer than to keep your existing ones, it makes it ever so more apparent that you really need to forge that personal connection with your customer. We all say that we know our customer, but we don't. We need to start engaging people in conversations, getting to know what they like to do, and putting ourselves in their shoes as well. The insights that we can get are amazing. And also, talk to people. Talk to people that don't ski, that don't partake in what your business offers. I recently gained a new insight that maybe all of you know, but I didn't know it. Young people in urban areas don't own cars anymore. They don't pay for parking spots, and their friends don't own cars either. So I was talking to somebody who really wants to come to the mountains more, but she can't get there. So this was news to me. And it's this kind of revelation that we need to seek out. If we seek out stuff that is new to us, 
then we're going to naturally and organically come up with ways to grow our business. Another insight that I learned a little while ago has to do with beginner skiers and intermediate skiers and how they think. I was skiing with a friend, a close friend, who grew up snowboarding, but she wanted to get back into skiing. And we were going around the hill. She was doing amazing. She was doing all the black runs. We got some great powder turns. And then we decided to go for lunch. And all of a sudden, she's not behind me anymore. She stopped, paralyzed in fear. And I'm like, what, what's going on? It turns out that she was really scared of falling off the edge of a cat trap. I think you guys call them catwalks in the US, those narrow paths. And the edge of this cat track was like nothing. It was a little tiny incline, but she was terrified that she was going to plummet to her death. Afterwards, I went to our ski school, and I inquired about this phenomenon, this really weird thing of being absolutely terrified of falling to your death off the edge of a cat track. And it turns out that this is really common. So what I urge you guys all to do is come up with these insights. Share the information that you get every day from your workplace and move it on up the ladder. Because I had no idea that people were scared of falling off the edge of a cat track. How do you talk to customers in a way that's going to give you information that you really need to know? You need to really engage with them and really, really seek to understand what they're saying. And you also need to put yourself in their shoes, too. One thing that I find quite useful is throwing away all my meetings for the day and saying, I'm going to have a day like my customer. So I drive to the hill. I park in the farthest away parking spot I can. I lug all my ski stuff to the lodge. I wait in line to buy a ticket. I go to the rental shop. I wait in line for my equipment. And I watch, and I listen, and I observe people. And I don't have anything on. I don't have my name tag on. I don't have anything on that shows other guests that I work for the resort. And I learn so much. You can learn a ton by just observing, looking at people's facial expressions, their size of exas exasperation, their smiles, their joy. And you can figure out what they like to do, what they don't like to do, what's working for them, and what's not working. So one thing that I would challenge all of you guys to do is to make time each day, even if it's only 10 or 15 minutes. Make time to get out of your office, go out into your resort or your workplace, and strive to discover something about somebody that you don't already know. We've talked a lot today about diversity and about old white guys running the show. <laughs> and to get past this, it's just so important to try to do things differently than we've ever done them. So go out there and talk to people. Get a sense of what they like and what they don't like. Don't think about how you're going to plug this into your CRM software afterwards. But really, really seek to understand them. The insights you can get by doing so can be transformational for your business. And they can really help you to come up with a lot of great new experiences for your customers. Like Kelly referenced earlier, it's all about the emotional aspect of things. People love having a great emotional connection to the brand. It keeps them coming back time and time again. And getting a sense that management or somebody in the business really cares about you, and it's not just a faceless entity that you're visiting, is incredibly important. 